At the age of 12, I really decided I want to be a vet. My sisters and brothers were much older than me, so the animals were all, in a way, my companions when I was growing up. And then maybe around the age of 17, 18, I decided I wanted to work with wildlife. And at 26 years old, here she is in her dream job, taking care of the whole country's wildlife. <laughs> but these wild animals are very different from the ones she learnt about in England. Uh, uh, don't. Come on, Tash. <laughs> Ouch. Natasha. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uganda was once known as the Pearl of Africa, a beautiful land teeming with wildlife. But 30 years of civil war and poaching have left the whole country virtually empty. Gladys's job is to reverse this drastic decline and restock 20 national parks. Thousands of giraffes once roamed these vast plains, but today there are less than a hundred. There is a real danger that giraffes in Uganda will go extinct. Gladys has chosen Kidepo National Park to set up her first breeding project. These are the last six giraffes in the country that she knows are free of disease. Already, Gladys has found a lifeline from a neighboring country. Kenya has more giraffes than it needs. And if she can organize it, they've said she can have some. It's one of the biggest projects I have to do, and it's the first time anything like this has ever been done in Uganda. So I'm really excited. It's a very big challenge ahead of me. But before she even starts, Gladys has got a problem. Catching giraffes is not easy, because they are big and they are dangerous, and they can run very fast. The only way is to knock them out with a tranquilizer fired from a rifle. Oh, I missed it. Darting is not one of Gladys's strong points. She prefers to work at it in the privacy of her own back garden. Only her brother is allowed to watch. It's like a real dart that people are using. Yeah. I didn't learn that in a vet school, and I've had to practice at home, in the garden. When you get into the field, you waste a lot of time and money with missed darts, because the anaesthetic is very, very expensive. So it's quite embarrassing when you're in the field, and then you miss. Shall we have a go? We're just doing now. Well I can't help feeling sorry for the for the animal. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Okay. Pray Even though she's in charge of all the animals in the country, the Ugandan Wildlife Authority can't afford to give Gladys her own transport. So she has to borrow her mother's car. Now she can go to Nakuru National Park in Kenya to catch her giraffes. Kenya Wildlife Service Vet Unit is going to assist me in this translocation. They're really great and I, I know most of the vets and I hope to get a lot of help from John Wamboa, the Kenya Wildlife Service Chief Vet. Hopefully today I'll get a chance. If the animal's in a good position, I'll try out. John's allowed me to get a chance to doubt. That's my first time to do a giraffe translocation. So I'm learning from the Kenya Wildlife Service team. The vet unit in Kenya has been running for years. So it's a good model for Gladys to set up her own unit back in Uganda. She's brought her own rangers along so they can learn how the experts capture large wild animals and move them from country to country. Her long-term plans depend on her mastering these skills. The only real way to learn is on the job. 
Like and this that. is a crash course. The pressure must be here, not here. Thank Suppose you're around the neck. You're around the neck. Yeah. Okay. But I think that it will be better if you see it. Okay. Mm. Mm. You see it, maybe when they are doing it. Yeah. yeah. There may be a lot of giraffes in Kenya, but Gladys is only looking for young females, small enough to handle easily. So first, they have to search for suitable candidates. Which one should I use? Which one should... Is that the right needle to use? During snatched breaks, John checks that Gladys knows the right procedure. I'm a bit worried because giraffe translocations are full of complications. Giraffes are very difficult animals to handle once they're darted. And they can very easily die. So I have to drop the antidote before darting because the moment the giraffe's down after five minutes, it's got to be reversed. That's the one in front. No, they're hiding here. I think the best thing is just you turn back and maybe you come along the road. Okay. Release the trigger. Okay, cook and uncook. Yeah? Gladys is still getting some last minute advice. You cook and cook. Cook and release the trigger. And cook. Without releasing the trigger. And cook is. To make matters worse, the Kenyan gun is different and far more powerful than the air gun she's been using at home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really get nervous and anxious and I think I'm completely crazy yeah. doing what I'm doing. And I have a lot to learn. I know that it's going to be a very steep learning curve. I think even steeper than the learning curve during vet college. What's better, the bum or the shoulder? We need to see the animals first. That's our one. Just wait, 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 eh? mm. This is coming curious. I think ca he might come for... Yes, um, Bound. The <laughs> dart bounced off the animal's tough hide. I don't know why it bounced. It bounced off. Yeah. She reloads and John gives her a second chance. They drive as close as they dare, and she lines up again. Shoulder. Mm -hmm. Shoulder. Got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it, yeah. During an operation like this, every moment counts. Gladys has got two minutes to reverse the tranquilizer, or it could be fatal. Giraffes are very sensitive animals. If they become overstressed, they can hyperventilate and die. The antidote is in. If Gladys has got it right, the animal should get to its feet within a few minutes. Yeah, just give it iron. A makeshift blindfold is put over the giraffe's head to keep it calm, so it can be manoeuvred into the crate and transported to a boma a sort of holding pen. I've just caught the first giraffe and I'm really excited okay. and everything started after all these months of planning. It looked really dramatic and frightening but the giraffe is fine and we have to do that in order to get the giraffe into the crate. We've put her into the boma and she's cooling down. I've decided to call her Nakuru. I was slightly out of my depth because it's really new. It's the first time I'd seen it happening. With the first one safely in the pen, they go off to hunt for others. To Gladys's relief, John takes over the darting. It hit and it stayed. But behind. The operation is running smoothly. 
It looks like Gladys's goal is going to be achieved, as the next one is safely in the crate. As the light starts to fade, they manage to catch number three. The intense pressure of learning on the job, as well as the physical demands, is taking its toll on Gladys. Every time I come here, I'd like to see how many we've got. Just feel a sense of achievement. Each time there's one extra giraffe in the boma. That's why I like taking photos of them. <laughs> I'm really happy about the ones we're getting. Nakuru and the other giraffes will be kept here for five weeks. Gladys wants to be sure they are given a clean bill of health so they don't carry any diseases back to Uganda. Mm. I finally got my giraffes and I was lucky that I got a chance to dart and I actually hit the target. I thought I would miss because I've never done giraffe darting at that distance before, but it must have been all the practice in the back garden. Gladys's giraffes are vulnerable, so rangers stand guard to protect them from poachers and wild cats. So with the giraffe operation a success, it's back to Uganda, where even a wildlife vet has to deal with the mundane. At vet school in London, Gladys was taught surgery. But the number of wild animals needing operations is small, so she takes every chance to keep her hand in. Oh, you're gorgeous. It's nice that I, I can still be called out to treat domestic animals, even though I'm a wildlife vet. It's nice to see animals that I don't have to dart for a change. Dr. Kawa is assisting her in case of complications. Gladys hasn't spayed a cat since she left college two years ago, so she's a little rusty. Big enough. Hmm? Is it big enough? Yeah. Shall we come here first? You just make a hole through the ligament. Because I'm younger than most people and relatively inexperienced, that feel that I'm under much closer observation. But on the whole, I know that I can do the job that I'm doing. Because the cat is pregnant, I don't have to take out the uterus, so it makes the operation shorter. You can just take out the ovary. Another Ugandan cat safely spayed. Don't lose it. Wakey, wakey. It's ten past three. To the far west of the country, there's a very important group of wild animals that need Gladys's attention. This is the impenetrable forest, home to one of the most endangered animals in the world, the mountain gorilla. There are only 650 of them left, and half live here. Gorillas are my favorite animal, and it's a big plus being the vet officer for you, Uganda Wildlife Authority, that I get to treat the mountain gorilla on top of all the other animals. It's a big responsibility protecting these rare primates. So every month, Gladys makes this 14-hour drive to the forest to check on how they're doing. Her first call is to a group of gorillas that are the biggest tourist attraction in the country. 
In fact, the money they bring in pays most of Gladys's wages. But they are very susceptible to diseases caught from humans, so their interaction with tourists must be carefully controlled. The one coming down is female. The truck, I think she's pregnant. <laughs> female. I would be blamed if one of the gorillas died, so I've really got to make sure that we've been looking after them properly. And that's why I'm trying my best to monitor their health so that it doesn't get too bad. You get to the gorilla when you can't do anything for it. Whenever a gorilla dies, I've got to do a thorough post-mortem and find out exactly why it died. Oh, that's the youngest baby. Less than a year old. It's a silverback. So I spend all their time eating and resting and walking. So if I get to a group and a gorilla's not eating, you watch him and within 10 minutes he's not eating and you start to worry, he's just sitting there. You know that he's sick, he's got some infection or something, something's stopping him from eating. I also like fatty. Oh. <laughs> He likes frightening tourists. See that female with Chuchu? Her eyes. You see her eye? Prinali. If you see, check it every day and tell me if it's getting worse. The eye of that female there with Chuchu. It's, there's discharge coming out. Mm. With gorilla veterinary care such a new thing in the country, Gladys has to spend a lot of her time training the rangers who track the gorillas every day. Imagine trying to dart them. Already this is paying off. They have reported a gorilla with bare hairless patches on its neck. It sounds to Gladys like scabies, a highly contagious and potentially fatal disease. The only way to check on its condition is to look for herself which may mean she'll have to dart the animal. She isn't too happy about this idea, particularly in this dense vegetation. But it's her only option if she's to satisfy herself once and for all. If one dies, she'll be blamed. She hides the dart gun because if the gorilla sees it, he'll run away. Even though Gladys manages to get close, the gorilla teases her by staying just out of range. It's just too thick here. He seems to be moving fast. I think he's also going to present his back to me. And he keeps presenting his front. That's why. He also knows why we are here now. They are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's always bush between me and the gorilla. That's why I haven't been able to that yet. As the day wears on, the gorilla seems to be winning the game and Gladys is almost in despair. See, he was very close to us. And then, unexpectedly, for a moment she finds herself very close and gets a clear view of him. Gladys snatches a shot. Shit, honey. There won't be another chance today. At least she got close enough to see that the infection seems to be healing. 
been going through the bush for three hours and it's four o'clock now. It will take us another three hours to get back to camp. We want to get back before it's dark. So I think we should leave it for today. And the stress, we've been following him and following him. And each time he gets smarter and smarter. Okay. I think we'll just have to leave it and monitor his condition. So as we come, we keep monitoring? Yeah, okay. every day. And if he's turning for the worst, you've got to tell me and I come straight away. Okay. Sometimes I feel really afraid inside, but I don't want other people to see that. And I try to project an image that I'm in control, especially when planning big operations. I sometimes lie in bed worrying whether everything's really going to work out. I'm sure my friends from the veterinary college are reading about how best to cope with a certain disease in a cat or a dog. And here I am reading about transporting giraffes by air or by road. What's the best option? It's been five weeks since the young giraffes were caught, and now they have begun the long journey to their new home in Uganda. Transporting animals from one country to another is extremely rare. Moving them by plane is even more unusual. It's a big moment for Gladys. Everyone in the district is turned up, including the rangers to greet the Kenyan giraffes. the female was shaking and when we were coming down she was really shaking you know the big female yeah very nervy a very long one hour Ooh, sorry like this uh -huh. oh we're putting two on at the same time we just now have to get them to the bombers that's the next challenge the giraffes are taken to another enclosure to settle down before they're finally released. But it's not over yet. Gladys's favorite giraffe, Nikuru, has collapsed. If she rests her head on the ground for too long, the blood will rush to the brain and she will die. Okay. We sound like she didn't collapse in the plane. That is just the, the greatest luck. You surprised? <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the next one. Everyone out of the way. Out. Everyone out. <laughs> He's out quickly. <laughs> and the rest are going to meet. Ah, oh, that is so sweet. Look, they're all going to meet. That is just gorgeous. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. 
They were like, hey. At last, the three Kenyan giraffes are set free. Gladys follows them to see if they are accepted by those in the wild. It's gone really well. After all that hard work, capturing them in a crew from their mothers, and now they're here safely in Kitepo. Mixing up with the Kitepo giraffes, so it's brilliant. They're finally free, and they're with the others. It's great. A very nice ending. And within a couple of years, these giraffes will be producing the new herds to restock Uganda's empty parks. I see something like this as being symbolic of changes in Uganda, because it means that Uganda's really now over the worst, and it's making a commitment to develop the country again. This is just the beginning. Gladys knows there are more challenges, a lot more animals, and a lot more darting ahead. Got it. And she'll be ready for them. The future of making babies next on BBC One from fertility to childbirth in a Tomorrow's World special.